I'm going to show you how you can create this advertising banner unroll inside Blender. Click the link below if you want to follow along with this tutorial and download the footage. So since the camera is moving within this shot, we're going to have to do a 3D motion track of our scene so we can stick the banner unroll to the building. So come into Blender and I'm going to jump into the motion tracking tab, which basically is if you don't see it, then click this plus button then go down to VFX then click on motion tracking. Next, I'm just going to drag and drop my footage into this area right here. Then I'm going to click on set scene frames to set the beginning point and the end point of our clip. Now I already know that this clip is 142 frames, but if I go over to output, it says 143. So I'm just going to click on this and set one and say 142. Perfect. Next, what I want to do is I'm going to click on prefetch to load our clip into RAM so that it plays back better. And then I'm going to change the motion model to affine. I'm going to change the match to previous frame and I'm going to click on normalize. Next, I'm going to make sure I'm on frame one and I'm going to select detect features. I want more tracking markers. So I'm going to click this 12 down button here, detect features. I'm going to change the distance between each pixel to 80. So that should bring up some more trackers. I'm going to change the threshold to 0.05 and I want to change the margin to 60. Because I changed the margin to 60, that means 60 pixels between edges of every frame, there'll be no markers, if that makes any sense. Next, I'm gonna press Control T to track forwards or click this button right here. Perfect. Because all my markers are selected, I wanna hide them all, so I'm gonna press H to hide them. And I'm gonna press Detect Features again. And this time, I'm gonna press Shift Control T to track backwards. Now that that's done, I want all my tracking markers to show, so I'm gonna press Alt. H. I'm going to press A to select them all and I'm going to press Control L to lock them so that when I select them they don't move around and I don't mess up the track. So come over to the Solve tab. I'm going to click on Focal Length, Optical Center and Radial Distortion and I'm going to click on Keyframe. Basically what that's going to do, Blender will search for the two keyframes which have the most parallax between them two instead of us inputting it ourselves. So once that's done, I'm going to click on Solve Camera Motion and we have a pixel error of 5.95 which is bad but I've seen a lot worse so we want to try and get below one pixel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the clean up 12 down button and I'm going to select filter tracks and it's come up with 42 problematic tracks so I'm going to hover my mouse over the clip I'm going to press X and select delete and I'm going to solve camera motion again and we've got a pixel error of 3.13 which is better than 5.95 which is better but we want to get below one pixel so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to select all my markers. I'm gonna press Alt L to unlock them, otherwise this won't work. And I want any errors, I'm gonna come over to clean up and any tracking markers that have a pixel error above say six, I wanna select. So I'm gonna click on clean tracks. It's highlighted all these trackers that have a pixel error above six. So I'm gonna delete them, press X and delete. And I'm gonna solve camera motion again. And we have a solve error of 0.66, which is fantastic. But I think we can do a bit better. I wanna get below 0.5. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up over to the top left and I'm gonna just select these trackers here. Just select a couple of them and I'm going to delete them and I'm going to click on solve camera motion. And now we have a solve error of 0.39, which is absolutely fantastic. So now that's done, I'm just going to lock my tracking markers again. So press A and then control L to lock them again. And I'm going to come over to orientation and I want to set the origin point first. So I'm going to scroll into my building. And I'm going to set the origin point to this tracking marker right here. And the reason why I've set my origin point directly on the building is because this is the area I want my banner to unravel. Nine times out of ten, you want to set your origin point around where you put your CG element. This is because it decreases the amount of slippage you can have in your 3D track. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to select on set origin. Then I'm going to select setup tracking scene. And as you can see in the top right, we have everything pretty much set up. So what I'm going to do next is I am going to, I'm going to select the plane and I'm going to get rid of it. X, delete. I'm going to scale down the cube, click it, press S to scale down. That's about right. And just so I can see everything better, I'm going to come back into my layout tab, hover my mouse over here onto this viewport. I'm going to press zero on the numpad. So if you don't want to press zero, just press this button here, which is toggle camera view. So I'm going to press zero on my numpad. 
so I can look at my camera view. And I'll say this part is very important. I'm gonna adjust the orientation of my scene. I wanna get the X going across and I wanna get the Y going into the distance. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna select 3D cursor, select the camera, and I'm just gonna orient my scene correctly so that any objects we add, it matches up perfectly to the building. So R and X. And I'm just gonna orient it so we've got the X values or the X red line matching up with the line of the building. And again, the same with the, with the green line, the Y line. So R, Y. Just gonna make this a smaller so I can see it better. I'm gonna press play so I can just test the track. All right, perfect. Next, what I wanna do, I'm gonna select my cube. I'm gonna come over to this 12 down button and I'm going to select motion tracking so we can see our tracking markers. And I want, I want this front face of the cube to rest on our cursor exactly. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna press Shift S and I'm going to select object origin to face, go back into object mode and press Alt G so that the front face of our cube snaps exactly or precisely onto our cursor. And if you don't wanna do that, you can always just go and <laughs> move the cube so that the front face of the cube is matching up with the cursor. I just want it to be precise. Okay, next I'm going to go back into the camera mode. I'm gonna check our track. That looks solid. So what I wanna do, this cube is gonna be our collision. So I want it to match up with the building. So I'm gonna go into edit mode, go into face select mode. This plugin is machine tools. It's a super handy plugin for Blender. It makes me snap in and out of object and edit mode really quickly. I'm on 20 to 30 other things. It speeds up the workflow in Blender. But if you wanna go back and forth between object mode and edit mode, just press tab and the numbers one, two, three. Number one to go into vertices mode, two to go into edge select mode, and three to go in face select mode and I'm going to go in wireframe mode actually so click on wireframe mode kind of zoom in and then I'm just going to move this face out here like that and I'm going to move this face up like that around there and I'm going to move this face down that's fine for me next what I'm going to do which I forgot to do is I'm going to click on this button here transform pivot point and i'm going to set it to bounding box center i'm happy with that that's how long my flag's going to be so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hop back into solid mode go into object mode and then see our track and that looks like it's tracking perfectly next we're going to create the cloth simulation so i am going to press shift a mesh plane to bring up the plane rotate this plane 90 degrees on the y-axis so when it's selected come over to here go over to rotation type in 90 next i'm going to decrease the size of the width for the plane and i'm going to move it to the side i think that's a bit too big so again i'm going to press s shift z so that we're not affecting the scale on the z-axis yep let me see if it's tracking perfectly nice 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 i'm happy with that I'm gonna hop into edit mode, edge select mode, and I'm just gonna make this just a bit taller, about to here, that's fine. Back into object mode. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to select the plane and I'm just gonna move it forward a tiny bit. Press G and then X, so I'm only affecting the X axis and I'm just gonna move it forward a tiny, tiny bit. All right, next what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hide the cube because it's getting in my way. I'm gonna select the plane or our banner. I'm gonna go into face select mode. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna right click and select subdivide. Once you've done that, you should get this table down the bottom left, select it. And I wanna change the number of cuts to 65. Next, I'm gonna go into vertex mode. Just press free on your keyboard. And I'm gonna select all the vertices on the bottom row of the plane or the banner like so select all of them on the bottom row then come over to the data tab under vertex groups press plus and then while all these vertices are highlighted on the bottom click assign once you've done that come back into object mode what we want to do now is we want to create a circle and we want to convert it into a spiral and then we want this plane to replicate the spiral so we can get the unrolling banner effect so what you need to do next is go edit preferences let me drag this in the middle right here. Come over to get extensions and type in add. And you wanna make sure you have the extra curve objects installed 
and the extra mesh objects installed. So next, what we wanna do is I'm gonna press Shift A, Curve, come down to Curve Spirals and type in Archimedean. Once you've done that, we have our curve appear. Now I'm gonna change the number of turns to five. I'm gonna change the steps to 50. I'm gonna change the radius growth to 0 0.1. Two, and I'm going to set the radius to about 0.27. You want to make sure the radius growth is in the pluses. You don't want to make it a minus because if this number becomes a minus like so, it will mess up the unraveling of the actual banner. I've tried it, trust me, don't do it. Make sure the radius growth is in the pluses. Once that's done, I want to come back into object mode and we're just gonna rotate and move this spiral so that it's in the middle of our banner, but at the top. First off, I'm gonna rotate it on the X axis. So 90, and then I'm gonna move this up on the Z axis. So I'm gonna press G then Z to move it up so that the middle point of the curve is just resting on the banner, that's fine. And I'm just gonna eyeball it and move it in the middle. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna press S to scale down the spiral. Right now, I want the end part of this spiral to be facing this way. So in order to do that, I'm gonna come over to my Z rotation. And is it 90 or 180? I think it's 180. Is it one? It's 180, isn't it? 180, yeah. And you want to rotate it 180 degrees if you still have that problem. I'm going to hop into edit mode again. Once in edit mode, I'm going to press the tilde key and go into front view. You want to literally, these three vertices, you want to move them out like so. So I'm going to click on that vert, press G. I'm going to move it out about here. Click on this one, press G, move it about here. Click on this one, press G, move it about here. Trust me, just follow these steps. It, it all makes sense towards the end of the tutorial. So click on that. Have it moving out like that, like a teapot. That's what you want. Have it branching out like a teapot. Perfect. Come back into, no, not rendered mode. Come back into object mode. Now we're gonna make this banner curve around the spiral. So select the banner, come into modifiers, select add modifier. Well, we want to add a curve modifier and we want the curve object to be the spiral. So let's select spiral and the deform axis is on the complete wrong axis. So what we wanna do is, I think the axis will be minus Y. Select minus Y and boom, we have the plane rolled around the curve like a spiral, which is brilliant. I'm gonna right click the plane I'm gonna click Shade Smooth, and I think that banner looks a bit too big. I'm gonna press S on the spiral, and I'm gonna scale it down. And you can see, as I'm scaling it down, this part of the plane is coming out like that, and that's exactly what we want. If you scaled it down enough and the banner's not too long, then what you wanna do is you wanna select the plane, you wanna come into the Object tab, and you wanna change the transform or the location of the Z, the Z axis. I'm gonna set that to zero because my one was all right already. All right, perfect. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a cloth sim to the banner. So I'm gonna select the banner, come over to the physics tab, select cloth, make sure that it's on frame one. And in the cloth sim tab, scroll down to shape, click on shape, click on pin group. And now, I mean, you can change the stiffness tension if you want, but I'm gonna leave it at 15, 15. It seems to be fine. And I'm going to press zero on my keyboard to go into camera mode and go to frame one. And I'm going to press play and we have a perfect banner on roll. I can see that my banner is not orientated properly in the slightest and it's most probably slipping as well. Is it slipping? Yeah, it's most probably slipping as well. And that's because we need to move it into the correct position. So I'm gonna come back out of that. I'm gonna to go to frame one and I'm going to bring up the cube again. I'm gonna select both the spiral and the banner and I'm just gonna move them forward on the X axis. So about here, go in to see how that is. That's a lot better. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the cube object and I'm gonna select collision. Now, what you wanna do is press Control A, apply the scale. So we've added a collision modifier to the cube and we've applied the scale. So when we press play, the banner should collide with the cube. So it looks like it's colliding with the building and not going through it, lovely. Now that that's done, what I wanna do is I want 
to make my cube a shadow catcher. So we're gonna make sure the cube's selected, come over to object, come over to shading, to visibility and select shadow catcher. And if I press zero on my keyboard, go into render mode, you will see that our flag is cast in shadows. So next what I'm gonna do, now that that's done, I'm going to select the cloth, go into physics, scroll down to cache, and I'm gonna select bake all dynamics to cache our cloth simulation. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna add a texture to our cloth simulation. So I'm going to come down here, select shader editor to go into our shader editor. While our banner is selected, I'm gonna add a new material to it. So come over to material, select new, and we have a principal BSDF right down here. Let me just make this a bit bigger so you can see. I'm assuming you have the Node Wrangler plugin installed. If you don't, go into preferences, add-ons, type in Node Wrangler and add it. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna press Control T to get my mapping nodes up like this, perfect. And the image texture I got was an image I found on the internet, so I'm gonna add that. Click on open, navigate to your image and add it. Once this image has been added, uh, we can see the orientation of the image is incorrect. So we're gonna go back into face select mode. We're gonna press A to select all the faces on the banner. Click on UV and select unwrap. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this tab over here to the UV editor. I'm gonna open this up over here so that it shows up in this little corner right here. So once you've unwrapped your image and you've opened up the UV editor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into our shader editor and I'm going to change, hit the repeat to clip. I'm going to select all the faces and I'm going to press S and Y so we're only increasing the scale of the Y value. And just looking at my flag in the monitor over there, I'm gonna say that's about right. So let's go back into object mode and it's flipped around for some reason. All right, if that's the case, then basically what we need to do is we need to just go back into face select mode, select all the faces, come back into the UV editor mode, press R and rotate it around is it 90 degrees. You can actually just hold control and rotate it around one minus 180 degrees or 180 degrees. So then now that we go back into object mode and we press play, the banner is unrolling with the logo showing. Okay, that's perfect. Next, what I'm gonna do, you don't have to do this step, but if you wanna make sure the banner is fitting within our scene, you wanna add a HDRI that replicates the environment. I'm gonna go into the asset browser and I'm gonna go and add an HDRI, which is very, very similar to the environment of our clip. So I've installed a plugin called Polyhaven. So I'm gonna go to HDRIs, outdoor, urban, and I'm gonna add this HDRI to the image and I'm gonna turn off the lights here or delete the light. Perfect, I'm gonna come into our camera and I'm going to open up background images. I'm gonna increase the opacity and I'm going to increase the pass per two. Perfect, and then I'm gonna press play. See how that looks. And that looks fine to me. And that's how you create a advertising banner unroll on a moving image stuck to a building.